today I'm going to walk you through how to use Sketch uh, to create a data table with real data inside it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I already created two symbols and I'll show you those here. Um, under table here I've got a header symbol that I created and you can see as I pull that out there what we're going to be putting into this table and here's my table row. So now this is the beginning of my table. Um, what we're going to be using here is as well as Sketch App, we're also going to be using the Craft plugin. That's this over here. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'm going to show you where you can get that. Uh, you get that right here at envisionapp.com forward slash craft. Uh, the reason we're going to be using that is uh, two pieces that it uh, contains right here, data and duplicate. Really powerful, uh, especially when we want to create a data table. So um, let's go ahead, jump back to Sketch, and I will show you how we go ahead and create this. Um, so, we're going to need a row number, uh, a company name, score, which I'm going to say is like a um, 0 to 100, and it's some random number right now that we're just scoring this company with. Uh, trend, is that company moving up or down and by what percent? So let's say we're going to do negative 20% to positive 20%, um, and also uh, with that we're going to use maybe uh, decimals. So. Uh, we're going to throw in a city where the company is located, and then maybe a first date that we contacted that company. So let's go ahead and get started. The first piece here. Um, these are symbols that I created. So normally what we may do is have an override, and I could go through and I could say, well, this is row one, and this company is 3M, and my score is 27. Well, you can see that it's changing right here on my first table row, but if I want to do a table with 10 rows like we're going to create today, or even 100 rows, yeah, it's convenient having the override over here, but it's going to be a little too tedious for my taste. So let's go ahead and undo that and use uh, craft over here. <clears throat> so this first piece, uh, that's the row number since we're only doing 10. Um, I'm just going to type that one in. It's a little easier. So they don't have row numbers in the data part of craft, but what they do have is um, custom data, or I can even throw photos in there from my own folder, from Dropbox, uh, you know, all kinds of options here for photos. We're not going to be doing any photos. Um, I can go to the web and pull data, I'll show you that in a minute. Or we can actually load true real data um, by using a JSON file. We're not doing that today. Um, I'm going to show you a much simpler way to do it if this is just for a quick prototype. So, um, on custom here, we're going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom. We need to add one. And let me do that real a little slower here. <clears throat> I'm going to go through these down at the bottom. There's an add item. Click that. And then choose item. It's going to let me add from ones that aren't in my list yet but are still default. We're not going to use those. We're going to use uh, our own. And we're going to call this row number. Now like I said, we're only doing 10 rows, so it's a little easier for me to just do one, well, if I can type it right, one, two, three, four, and so on until I get the 10. The important part here is I want these to be in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I need to click, click this box here to preserve the order. I'll go ahead and save that. And now on number, <clears throat> what I want to do is add a row number. It's going to ask me where inside the symbol I want to put that. And I have all of my symbol areas uh, labeled correctly, and I want that to be under number. Hit OK, and you can see this just changed to 1. I didn't change it in my override to 1. I just said I want to fill it with this custom data over here. The second piece is company name. To do company name, what I want to do is go out onto the web and find a real company name. So uh, it's easier for me to do that than to start coming up with company names on my own and typing 10, or like I said before, 100. That's going to be tedious. The point of this is to get rid of all this tedious work. So let's go to the web. Um, I will show you out here. I went to <clears throat> Wikipedia. And I said, hey, give me lists of companies. I thought that was a great starting point. Um, I tested with this list of S&P 500 companies, but because that came from a table, it wasn't working quite right. So I dove through a little bit more, and I found a different list. 
Um, you can go down here by industry, this list of marketing research firms. They're broken up kind of in a, a, a list format here, um, but when I used it, it did work. So you may have to play around a little bit, but let's go ahead and we can copy this URL. We can jump right back to Sketch and then paste this in here. Hit enter. You can see I've already been there, but um, okay, perfect. List of marketing research firms. It shows up in here. And I'm going to go down to this first one. I'm going to highlight it. And it's going to say, hey, where do you want this inside the symbol? Great. Um, that's going to be my name. Let's hit OK. Boom. Company name, the first one, Oztam, popped right in there. Uh, the next piece uh, we're going to do is this score and trend. To do those, we're also going to create custom fields. So let's start with the score. Uh, the best way I have found to do this is to jump into Microsoft Excel. And I've created both my score and my percentages over here, but let's delete those and start over. So on this first row, or this first column here, you can see I've got it selected uh, to be a format of a number. And we said our score is going to be 1 to 100. <clears throat> so let's start with 1 and 2. And we're going to go all the way up to 100. So the easy way and why I pick Excel is I can select both of those cells there. I can grab the little hook here, and I can just drag this down way past 100, <laughs> all the way to 100. And now you can see I've got selected cells from 1 to 100. So I'm going to copy those cells, jump right back in here in this data table. We're working on score. Let me scroll up so we can see that. And again, we're going to add an item, add a custom item, and call it score. Then I just paste here. I'm not going to preserve the order, and I'm going to hit save. Now I can just click that element, say, oh, well, I want that to apply to score. And there we go. The score for this company is 96. The next piece we are going to work on is our trend. And like I said, our trend is going to be negative 20% to positive 20%. So we'll go right back over to Excel. And this second column here, B, um, I've got percentage already selected. And I want to do negative 20. Don't know why I want it to be 20 or 2,000. I'm not an Excel master, we'll just do it that way. The next one would be negative 19.5%. Yeah, again, I don't know. Let's just do it up here. Okay, so now I've got both of these. Let's do a test here. If I drag this all the way down and have it auto-complete all my values, if it goes past zero, will it uh, automatically start doing positive numbers? I'm not sure, but I can see here it's showing me as I go down what the number is going to be in that next cell. So let's scroll a little farther. Looks good to me. And there's 20%. Go ahead and copy those numbers. Jump back into Sketch. And this is where I'm doing is on Trend. I need to go ahead, add another item. This is my Trend item. And I'll paste my text in here. Again, I don't care about preserving the order. This needs to be random for me, and I'll hit save. Now for trend, we're doing trend, and we're selecting trend for the symbol. And there we go, 17.5%. So this next piece, uh, city, this one's easy for me because I've already got this in here. So for city, I can just click, click over here, say, put it in city, <clears throat> And whatever city that is, Furmanmouth, Furmanmouth, I don't know, but good for me. Um, and the last piece here, contact date. Again, that's one that's already in here for me. Really simple. So for contact date, I click dates. It asks me what format I want the dates in. I like month, day, year. Already selected contact date. And boom, there we go. So. All of my data is assigned to this table here. 
But what I need the next piece to do is I said we we're going to create 10 rows. So let's give it a shot here, see what happens. Um, it's not showing me those values that I put in there, so I'm a little concerned, but we'll go ahead and over here on Craft, we click Duplicate. We're going to do a vertical duplication of those rows, and I wanted 10 of them. So cross our fingers and duplicate content. Fantastic. Look at that. So for some reason, I did something wrong. It didn't keep my values on this first row. I may have to go manually add those values in. But since I have my overrides, it doesn't take too much to do that. So let's change that. I like 3M. Their score to me was about 52. Uh, the trend, let's say 5.5. And I have to add the percentage sign here, unlike with Excel, where I tell it what type of data is going into that cell. Here, it's asking me for just a string, just a value. Uh, the city, good old Denver, where I am, and then the date, uh, 6 14 uh, 2018. Perfect. So there's my table. The only other thing I wanted to show you here that I had created on this table is on my trend. I can real quickly go in here and decide, was that trending up or trending down? Just another symbol, just something to make my table look a little more interesting. And there's my symbols trending down. And there you go. Voila. Thank you. I hope this helps you. And uh, happy prototyping. Mm -hmm.